Hey guys, BJ the Brave here, and I am back with a deck guide, and not just any deck guide, but my first deck guide following the release of the of the Tau Empire, obviously. So, um, as you know, if you've been following my channel, I've uh, been busy sort of collecting and um, doing a lot of draft and playing a lot of the practice games, and I finally kind of got reached a point where I've been able to build a really good constructed deck. And I've taken this to ladder, it's doing very, very well, and um, it's a lot of fun. So let's get into it. So what we're basically doing here is we've um, we've taken Shadow Sun and we've built a theme around the battle suits, the crisis suits and the and broadsides, etc. Um, so the deck is essentially trying to win by taking control of the board and constantly building tempo, building bodies, and basically winning, yeah, just winning through through taking over the board essentially there's no sort of like really big fancy um, you know combo finisher to this deck or anything like that it's just progressively bigger bodies that dominate the board and I kind of like that actually um, that said there are plenty of synergies and plenty of combos within uh, the, ca the, the, the build up to that so let's let's take a look okay so the first thing is that uh, what you'll notice with this deck is that every body if you like every troop in the deck is essentially a battle suit. The only exception to that, I believe, is a very small handful of things. So we do run two of the Vespids because they are when you're trying to build like a, uh, like I say, a sort of tempo uh, deck where you you you're actually playing for board control and the bodies. Then f having flank with Vespid and and especially when the Warlord can play Markalite, meaning that Vespid can come on and essentially do three damage. It's just too good to pass up, so we do run double Vespid. Now I think the only other, yeah, the only other non uh, battle suit in the deck is actually the Honor Death Reel. Now the Honor Death Reel, in many ways, is one of the worst legendaries in the faction, but it's still good, and it's actually pretty good in this deck because um, it's only four energy first of all, so we 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 want to the fact that it's low curve with such good stats is actually the main reason why she or he is in there here. Um, the Ethereal comes with really good body and a shield. Um, and the other thing is it scales really well into the light game. So if we don't get it on turn four, uh, what we can do is play it next to some of our bigger units, which we're going to look at in a minute, to give them uh, Vanguard. And because we already run a lot of Vanguard, what you'll find is we pretty much always got Vanguard down in this deck. Um, to the d degree I even used to run the uh, guardian drone to have <laughs> even more but that's a bad idea because like I said we're looking for battle suit synergy and that is a troop that isn't a battle suit so we don't run that so let's just take a look we do run double Chiron tactics this card is just too good to not run it's basically one energy and it mark lights the whole board apart from the warlord but it doesn't matter if the troops are in stealth for example and obviously uh, the way mark lights work is that if you haven't attacked them, they just stay. The Maclites just stay on those troops. So this is absolutely superb, and it combos really, really well with the uh, Relentless Fusillade, which basically deals two damage to all enemies. So it's very much like the Storm Raven, the Ultramarines, but it does an additional two damage to anyone with a Maclite. So if we want to do four damage AOE, we just play that combo together, which is very, very nice. We run the Technological Supremacy in this deck. It was made for this deck. This card is absolutely fantastic uh, in a build like this where you've pretty much always got a battle suit to hand or on the board. Um, you can do things like trade with a battle suit and then play this. And not only does it heal it, but it actually says give plus three health. So if this is, I didn't actually read this right the first time. Uh, so let's imagine we're on this guy here. Uh, plus three health means that he can go up to 8 health yeah so you can actually play that card sometimes when it's on full health because it'll just give it plus 3 health but imagine that you've attacked with this guy got it, it's gone down to 2 or 3 health and then you suddenly put it back up to 8 all for 1 energy such a good card really really good even just getting that down on a basic crisis battle suit is really good now uh, we do run single pulse onslaught it's just because again in the early curve sometimes we just need um, 
that extra little bit of removal. It scales well as well because actually it helps to be a finisher. So if we just need that three damage reach, a bit like kind of how the ultramarines use theirs, uh, we can just burn the enemy down. Um, you could run a second one, I just can't find a slot for it to be honest. I do run two stealth drones, so sorry, this is the only other thing that is non-battle suit. I just think the stealth drones are just too good to leave behind, especially when you've got uh, such decent bodies like we've got. So, um, you know, you, you generally want to play that out on turn two, and then you play the crisis battle suit on three, for example, and it'll go into stealth. It's a perfect combination. So we run two of those. We do run a single coordinated engagement. Again, if you wanted to run a second engagement or a second sort of um, pulse onslaught, you could, you could potentially drop one stealth um, drone, but I, I like this balance, I enjoy this balance. I do run double crisis battle suit, I think this card's really good, especially for a common card. It's the fact that it has good stats and flying, like, the weakest stat is melee, but because it's flying, the melee is somewhat insignificant, so um, really, really solid for a 3-drop. And uh, yeah, Swarm Lord hates it. Uh, we run double dynamic offensive, now this is a key, key card in this deck. It will only, it says draw two troops from your deck if their battle suits give them flank. It'll only draw troops, right? So it's not going to draw any of your stratagems and spells. And as we've just said, we've only got a very small handful um, of things that aren't battle suits. So the idea was to really maximize the dynamic offensive and just really make sure that uh, whenever we play this card, not only do we draw two cards, but they gain flank. And that is super important because uh, we also run the stealth battle suit and the stealth battle suit obviously for health in stealth it's very likely to survive the next turn you get the homing beacon which basically for four energy can draw us a f um, deploy a flanking battle suit crisis battle suit that's not taking one out of your deck it's just deploying one so what that basically means is that in most turns around the mid game you've either got a stealth battle suit down giving you access to flank or you can play, you've played dynamic offensive setting up, giving you access to flank. So that's how we end up with quite a bit of flank in this deck. Okay, so it's very late here, guys. I'm sorry. Um, we've got the emergency dispensation. Now, this was my first legendary that I pulled, and it's actually really, really good. Um, in this deck in particular, you can get very used to your curve. So, for example, if you've got three energy left, you can play it. If you know you haven't had your crisis suits yet and they're in the deck, you can think, I'll play this, look for one of my crisis suits and then can play it out for, for zero energy. Or if you've got one en mana energy left, you can look for you know, your four drops like your stealth battle suits. So you can basically calculate like what it is you're looking for. It works really, really well in this deck. Very, very impressed with this card. So the Vespid Stingwings we already talked about a little bit, just really important to help us really fight for the board with their flanking. And then we've got the Crisis Bodyguard. So this is like our four drop uh, battle suit, mainly there for the Vanguard and the Shield. Um, it can be worked around if your opponent's got several pings to ping Shield off and attack with melee because it's not flying. But overall, I think it's pretty decent. Uh, the Honor Death Reel kind of talked about already, just really solid stats, really important to be able to fight for the board in that early game. Uh, and late game can kind of shut it out. So there's a few games I've had where I've got down to 10, 12 health. And then, you know, I've played a really big unit and then just dropped this next to the big unit, given the big unit Vanguard, and opponent's just got no way through. Uh, this is an excellent card. I think Storm Raven's pretty good out of the Ultramarines. And this is just Storm Raven on steroids. Um, or you could say Storm Raven minimum. Yeah. But again, because we've got. Uh, because we're running Shadow Sun, we've always got access to a one energy marker light. So, very, very good and very key to play that card. Stealth Battle Suit's excellent, real engine of the deck. Um, you drop this card on four, and then turn five, you can basically Crisis Suit, and you have one energy left, meaning that you can basically use Shadow Sun's Marker Light, or you can play Technological Supremacy on one of the suits to put them back up. Um, it's an incredibly good turn four and five. We also have the Broadside uh, Battle Suit, uh, in the five drop slot and again if you've drawn this off of the dynamic offensive that thing can be coming on with flank uh, and because it's got long range <laughs> that is just absolutely devastating that's such that's such a tempo swing think about the five drop in the Eldari that just got nerfed down to five energy just think about that how good that card was being able to come on and flank this thing can come on and flank with six 
that doesn't even get hit back. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. So good. Uh, I do run a single valued sacrifice. I think the way that this came into my deck is, first of all, this card's very good. Um, I've realized it's really good value because you're putting down three random drones and that can be any energy cost. So I had a game where I put the DS8 down that has five health. I put the flying uh, sniper drone down that has like four health and then a marker drone. And I was just like, wow, I've just put 12 health down or something for five energy, all got Vanguard. Good luck getting through that. It was a really good card. It's just a really good card. I think it could go in a lot of decks, but the other reason why it's good in this deck is that we we have to be very careful about playing troops that aren't battle suits. So this is a good way of getting troops down without it being... It's actually a spell, isn't it? A bit like the Gretchen mob in the Orcs. It's actually a spell. It's actually a stratagem. And so I think this is very good. I'd like to test this more. It might be that I need to get try and get a second one in. Um, and again, between that and between Honored Ethereal and between the Crisis Battle Suit, we've already got a load of access to, to um, Vanguard. And speaking of which, we run double Enforcer Battle Suit, so even more Vanguard. If it's later in the game, it'll actually draw the Guardian. You can actually get the Guardian drones out as well. So this is just a really solid Battle Suit in here. I only run a single Cold Star Battle Suit. I think I only actually own one. But even if I had to, I'd perhaps only keep one. It's very good. And again, if this is one of the cards that you get on as flank uh, from the dynamic offensive, then it's absolutely insane. But uh, it is seven energy, and it's very rare that you get to play out the companion markers. You'd need 11 energy to play the full card outright. So often you're just playing him, um, and then the next thing that gets deployed obviously will benefit from the health. He is on turn 7, so like, he's sort of like that awkward turn where it's just before the Hemlock, it's just before the Wailing Doom, it's just before the enemy Long Strike, you know. It can get hit by something pretty big, basically, and die, so if, but if it can avoid those, then this card's very, very good. Um, if you don't have it, you could definitely run the step without that one, but it's pretty good. And last but not least, these guys have really surprised me. The Riptide Battle Suits are utterly superb the fact that they come on with a shield it's the fact that they've got the um, when they when they get the dynamic offensive and these guys are coming on with flank it is absolutely crazy I mean they're coming on with flank and they're coming on with and they've got long range and eight damage so they basically turn into long strike <laughs> you know um, with this whopping nine health and again great target for the honor death reel to then stick next to it and make this bad boy uh, uh, um, you know a vanguard and he can keep putting his shield back on himself so it, it's just super I think this is deck is really really good guys it's really really powerful um, if you were gonna look for alternative cards I'd say you've got to be really careful about putting in uh, non um, you know, non-battle suits. There's definitely, uh, like for example, the four energy removal card that you could run, the one that does five damage, that could help you through uh, the mid game a little bit. This card's also pretty good, although we don't go too wide, but it's very, very strong if you've got even just two cards down, getting long range in this in this, in this this deck. Um, and even things like the Piranhas can be pretty good. But, uh, uh, or, the, or the Shasui, especially if it's early, ge uh, early game, you could go with something like Shasui, but again, it's not a battle suit. Now, the one battle suit that I did try one of these, and um, early game you do get these, it's, it's absolutely fine to play these. And actually, what I would say is if you're going to play these, you could probably drop the, um, one, maybe one of the stealth drones that we run in the two drop slot, uh, because this guy gives you stealth drones as well. He's a little bit slow and a little bit underpowered in compared to the rest of the deck, but it's still a suit and um, has access to stealth drones which are fantastic so yeah uh, that is it now I do I'm going to show you the forge um, briefly I do run the um, the tide wall gun rig and often I will select that as my defense stratagem uh, you could easily get away with playing the, the guardian drone 
but often, you know, if it's a Swarm Lord or Imatech or a lot of Lords, Zagstruck, a lot of Lords have a way to just sort of like work around the three health on that. And uh, I find that having that two damage uh, with extra ping is actually quite important. So I really like the Tide War Gun Rig in this in this deck. So there we got it. There we have it, guys. That is my Battle Suits Assemble uh, deck. I'm going to show you a few games now, and um, a couple of them. There's a couple of cards that have changed when I was so, so there were slightly earlier games, and then the last two games are with this deck card for card. Uh, but like I say, it was only one or two changes, so it's, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it, and um, give me give me your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And yeah, I'm really excited to have brought you this first guide. So please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so let's get into a game with our Shadow Suits. Shadow Sun Battle Suits, and we've got Galen. Hmm. Soon learn of the Firecast's true strength. Cleanse this place. We must protect the craft world. Offensive. Really want to get the second one of this for this deck. Only currently got one copy of it. So that helps us clear that up, which is nice. Do we just drop this, or do we actually play the? I think we play this. actually stuns that. I was not expecting that. Just gonna drop this and put some um, big body with armor. Should be a, presents a bit of a challenge for Galen, especially with only one stone. 
I guess you've just got to not be greedy and you sometimes see that, you sometimes think with a companion that you just want to get the drones, but... Finish that off though if he's got the three drop. We well, would have to take eight to face. Maybe he's got like Banshee Mask and Wind Rider or something. Then he wouldn't have to use Galen. When my vengeance oh, comes, it will be swift. We forget about that. Still, at least it trades. It's quite nice. Just a long way behind on health here. Stealth drone's looking good though. Spirits, heed my words and rise. The shadows are always vigilant. Kayan tactics looks good too. Oh baby. Look at this for the combo. to hide in. Well, that'll help get them into the drones, but not the big fella. I think we really, really need a blocker here. Blade of Cain. Okay, so if we play this here with courage and discipline, we shall stand victorious. doesn't draw into Wailing Doom.
Yes. Kaboom. Taking operational command now, Chasseau. We must not falter in our actions. Um. Do it that way. Two damage on the armor. We must not falter in our actions. We will deliver the killing blow. So he should now go for the crisis suit trade, right? Just one for one. Stealth suit would be the perfect drop here for us. That's not bad though. Not a bad second place. Against this guy, we just got to stay proactive. We can't, we can't let him get ahead on board. Make him react. Not great at reacting. Heal 
a crisis suit. Oh. His missile drone is not amazing here, right? Because it's just, it will get an extra two on the face, but. Does he use his stealth drone to break the shield? And then hit with those two to finish? Oh, he's gonna go long range, nice. Guess we just drop uh, our own missile drone then. Probably go fetch this. Keep the beat down on him. Stealth. He's a boat. Uh, that's a missile drone. That's got the drones in there. <coughs> we must not falter ah, in our actions. Can't afford to do that because I need to drop this. hit that. Oh god, have we just given him the coordinated engagement removal? I think he wins if he's got coordinated engagement. Such a big swing. Gets like a five energy tempo gain on me there. Surveiling engagement area. Okay, that's a good one. Should I be clear in here or should I go face? Stealth team 
in position, awaiting orders. I think because this is the thingy drone, I think I've got a clear. Flankers, has he got them? He has found the battle suit. Wow. This is a nice target for coordinated engagement. Though. If it's still there, it might not be. No, it's not. He's just traded in. It's fair enough. Oof, man, this is a tense game. Back and forth. How good this riptide's been, though. Strike at the heart of the enemy. Precision and efficiency. Got him! Yes! That was a great game. Okay, let's play some Shadow Sun versus Shadow Sun.
You will soon learn of the Firecast's true strength. Fight with fire and courage, and nothing can stand against us. Shadow Sun versus Shadow Sun. Carry how many cards we had. Interesting, so he's running the DSA. A greater good brooks no obstacle. guy's got flank so and he's got flank as well which is insane <laughs> Might be the beat down here. Kind of want to drop the F3 on it next turn, right? To, if that thing's still standing. Or do we want to set, drop the style suit and set up the extra flanker? even play an enforcer though. I don't know, I think, I'll, I think I want the flank. We must not falter in our actions. Don't feel that. Ready to engage. Yeah, well, let's just do this. And then we'll heal that back up.
Yeah, not quite sure I did that right. Thing is, next turn we got this guy coming on. He's flying. <laughs> a lot of vanguards in this deck so, so <laughs> you know, you'll never be sure you're actually through it. Is he going to hit that though? No, he's got the pulse damage. Okay. Fair enough. On a death reel is going to be nice on this. A non-viable approach. Converge at the established point. Nice. Really nice game. Taking operational command now, Chasso. I'll be taking operational command now, Chasso. Play your drone. Lovely counter for your drone. That here. Oh. An impossibility. No, we can't. Can't use it. Anymore. Yeah, sure. Possibility. Oh, we can't. Okay, so I've got to do it this way. Then our shield. Oh, he's got solid clips in his name. That's why. Excellent. Ahead on board against Shasui on my essence. The Firecast will not tend to this challenge kindly. An example must be made of you. Don't feel that. Ready to engage. 
I have my own path to follow. So you used Kion tactics. Right. Our unity of purpose will be up to the Yeah, I can both play that game. Don't feel that. Ready to engage. Count for a stealth suit is a stealth suit. We want to be reacting with our stealth to his stealth, and then obviously reacting with our flanker that comes out of it to his. This is... no, that's not that, is it? It's Cold Star that's flanking, isn't it? That's a super powerful... if we want it, but I don't think we're going to do that. Instead, I think we're just going to... I think we're just going to trade this. I think we're going to use this on this. I think we could have done that differently. I think we could have used... Crisis suit to get rid of the drone, and we could have taken a bit of damage on ourselves and used the pulse onslaught thing. I think we have the energy for that, don't we? Yeah, if we didn't heal this guy, we could have done that. Okay, he's using hard removal, or a big, big removal spell. It's fine. Razor shark strike, yeah. We'll still be ahead on tempo. not falter in our actions. Okay, so we're out of flankers, so we want to set that up next with stealth. Basically, Almost each turn, when you're in the mid game, you can set up a flanker either for playing a stealth battle suit or by using dynamic offense. Precise application of superior firepower. And that is a guy we don't have, unfortunately. How the hell do we get rid of him? Okay, well that's going to be good next turn. Three, five, 
seven is not enough, is it? I'm not sure if we it was right to clear it there or if we should have just sort of distracted it with something. Or even just develop the ball, let him hit us in the face and then flank with the rip side. We must not falter in our actions. He got the hard removal. It's a big decision, wasn't it? Taking the seven to face to kill Longstrider might have cost us because we are very low on health. Particularly if he's got hard removal. This is looking like an AoE turn, isn't it? because now he's still got long stride on him. I see what he's thinking is. To each enemy with my client. Play this though. Oh god, I can't. Oh boy. I want to hit this and then go face with that, but I think it's too greedy. Impatient, isn't it? I didn't need to do that. Basically, I don't 
don't think he's got he's got if he's got priority target. That's two, that's four damage. Yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> oh the but he's got the two drops, hasn't he? He's got the Okay, there we go. Nice. We got him. <laughs> nice. Okay, so so we made a few amendments to the deck, um, and I'm kind of liking where this is at. We finally got the second dynamic offensive. Uh, we put the second enforcer battle suit in as well. Now, if you've got the five drop, the valued sacrifice, the, the three drones, you can, you can put a second one of those in if you're missing one of the suits. Um, what I've kind of learnt with this is that you need to, I think it's better to just minimise the amount of non-battle suits, so that when you play Dynamic Offensive, you're almost guaranteed to basically get battle suit with flank. The only kind of exception at the minute is uh, four drop, the honor death Ethereal. Um, I think everything else pretty much is a suit. So yeah, this is working really nice. Really like the combination of that with the AOE, and um, yeah, it's working pretty nice actually. Um, so yeah, if you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe. Check out my Tau Diaries um, videos where I'm basically giving all sorts of like updates and insights on uh, as I pro progress with the Tau, and also check out Forgecast as well. Uh, recent episode with. Long Tim and the Ecclesia, pretty much the whole episode we were analysing the town and stuff, so it's a really good one, so go check that out. Alright guys, thanks very much, I'll see you in the next one.